Related to the concept of reliability is a notion of internal control. So just a little working definition. Internal control involves the practices involved to ensure that your accounting records and reports are accurate and reliable and the firm's assets are protected from theft, fraud and misrepresentation. So to use an example, one way we can ensure the firm's accounting reports are accurate and reliable is let's say we are Playgrounds Galore. We get a statement from Lana's Landscapes and it shows our balance. It says at the start of the month we owe them $2,150 and at the end of the month we owe them $7,040. Well, how do we know that's accurate and reliable? Remember, the definition of reliability involved having documents to verify uh, all your financial transactions and not making any guesses or estimates. So in this case, what can we use to back that up? Well, we should have good document management. We should have a copy of each of these actual receipts, invoices and so on. We'll also have a ledger. Now, we haven't gotten to ledgers. That'll be on our next set. But that'll be something else that we can use to back up our uh, balance with Lana's Landscapes. However, the most obvious way is we should have a copy of that invoice. We should have a copy of that receipt. We should have a copy of that credit note and a copy of that invoice. And therefore, we can always verify exactly what we owe to any person or flip it around what somebody owes to us. Another thing we want to look at with internal control is making sure our assets are protected from theft, fraud and misrepresentation. Using an example, let's say we got our bank statement and it says there's a $20,000 payment to Vandalay Industries on the 20th of January for stock. However, we go and count our stock and there's only $42,000 on hand and there's $20,000 missing. We look at our records and you can see in the stock card here, it says on the 20th of January, we bought $20,000 of stock came in. We should have a balance of 62. But we go and count it in the stock room and there's only 42. So we want to make sure there isn't theft or fraud or misrepresentation here. What are some ways we can do that? It's all about establishing good procedures. If this is our shop, we want to make sure one person is responsible for buying purchases from the supplier. And so they go to Vandalay Industries, they deal with a separate person, person number two, who receives the order and then sends the stock back to the business. We want to have a third person who receives the stock and puts it in the stock room. That's effective internal control because we've separated all the duties. That way person one and person three, well person one can't rip off the system by actually buying stock and then stealing it before it comes in because there's actually a third person involved which is person number three. What if they're all the same person? What if person one has actually set up a business on the side called Vandalay Industries? They're the person that actually orders the stock and actually person number three who receives it. That's really poor internal control. That's just leaving yourself open to theft and misrepresentation, which is very poor internal control. So we want to look at some things that we can actually do specifically to improve internal control. We want to have well-defined responsibilities for staff and make it very clear who's in charge of what. We want to separate duties, which is the example we just used. Make sure tasks are broken up between several staff. We don't want the one person doing absolutely everything in an entire process because then there's nobody to monitor what they're doing. We want to rotate duties. If someone's always been the orderer, we want to make sure that you know after a year we rotate them to do something else. That way a new person can come in and they'll establish pretty quickly whether the old person has been committing any sort of theft or fraud. We want to have authorization rules, so maybe it could be a set amount. If you order something over $10,000, you need to make sure that you get approval. We could have document control. I think that's probably the easiest and the best way is to make sure there's copies of everything. That's reliability itself, making sure there's verifiable source documents. And lastly, there's always physical safeguards and checks. If any of us have ever walked into a store, we see security cameras, security tags, security gates at the door and so on. That's another way to protect your assets from theft and misrepresentation. So what has internal control got to do with reliability? Well, it requires that you keep source documents. Source documents can then be used to verify transactions have taken place or actually just as importantly not taken place. And then that ensures your information is accurate and reliable. So therefore internal control is definitely required to make sure your financial records are reliable. This basically minimizes the chance of any theft or fraud or misrepresentation.